How's it going, my truant people? Dr. Slacking, the Slacking Doctor, back for week five, I believe it is, of the ABC. That's the Associated Battle Community. I'm your coach of the Boland Bovines, and this week we're going up against my man, uh, Blake Trout, and his Mustrat and Swanna. We've just recently played him in PBA. Um, that battle should have been up a week or two ago, so you've probably already seen that game. Uh, Blake's a super, super cool guy. Um, pretty good battler. I know he's he's pretty sick of league at the minute, which you'll you'll see from his nicknames in this game. He's he's got a pretty weary with with draft leagues at the minute, but um, still a very solid battler and someone that we have to take seriously this week without any shadow of a doubt. And he has a pretty scary draft. So just before we get into the team builder and stuff, this is going to be fairly quick. Um, uh, I'm going to try and wrap through it as quick as I can. I apologise. We're not going to have any sprites on the layout. I'm in the middle of uh, my deadline at the minute for uni, my final master's submission. Um, and yeah, I, I just have no time at the minute. It's, it's hell on earth. So, this is a team that I built in like, jeez, I think it took me about half an hour to build this team while uh, I was laid in bed because I couldn't sleep because I'd had too many cups of tea trying to get my work done. Um, and the caffeine just had me buzzing. And then I messaged Blake, I was like, hey, do you happen to be around? And he was like, yes, we played at like 3 a.m. UK time or 2 a.m. UK time with a team I built in half an hour. So not best prep, but this is the team that I came up with anyway. And his, his team that we were going up against was um, Infernape, Tangrowth, Jellicent, Mega Manetric, Pinsir, and that's a Z user, Florgius, Salamence, Agron, his second Z user, Weavile, Alolan Dug Trio, and Avalug. Alolan Dug Trio and Avalug, two further Z users. So this is a four Z user draft. Pinsir, Agron, Alolan Dug Trio, Avalug. Now major threats to my team, Weavile, Salamence, Mega Manetric, Jellicent, Avalug actually could be a problem, Infernape, Tangrowth, Florges, literally everything on the draft. Alolan Dug Trio doesn't really scare me. Um, Agron potentially doesn't really scare me. Depends on the set. Something like Band and the Trick Room could be scary, but I don't think he has any Trick Room sets at all. Um, yeah, so they're the kind of things I'm worried about. And regular Pinsir doesn't really scare me too much either. Although a Scarf Moxie set has its place, like it could definitely do some work. So yeah, uh, pretty scary draft uh, in, in all truth. One of the things that I think he suffers with a little bit is not having, say, Salamence or Weavile or Infernape as his users. I think that he chose to go for those cheap Pinsir, Agron, Dugtrio, and Avalug. I think that's maybe the one problem with his draft is uh, that. That would be kind of the thing that I picked out when I was prepping for him. I was like, hey, I don't really have to fear any of his most broken ones firing for Z-moves, particularly the Salamence. Uh, but with that in mind, this is the team that we put together. And I should shout out before I do this. Uh, I don't have to shout out my front office this time. I have to shout out Checkmate Ben because he built an entirely different team for this game that I just point blank refused to use. So I apologize to him. I love him very much and I appreciate him building that team. But honestly, guys, the team he built me was mental. It had like five Pokemon with setup options plus Baton Pass pretty much. It was just like set up with everything and just keep passing the stats on and just chain until you have one Pokemon set up to like plus six and everything. It was just ridiculous. Um... I mean, he probably would have won with it, but I'm not that good at Pokemon, so I can't use the kind of things that Checkmate Ben runs. So, that being said, this is the team that I then pieced together uh, in response. So we have Scold, Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Drain Punch, Max Physical Defense, Slowbro, with the Colber Berry. Now this uh, may spring out one or two of you strange. Drain Punch, Mix Set, Minus Speed, Nature here with the uh, plus defense. Why? Like, why that? Uh, for the Weavile, this is basically Weavile bait. Weavile, I have no good switchings to. If you look at this team, like, nothing really wants to take either a knockoff or uh, an Ice Cold Crash. Um, yeah, I have some things, but they'll get worn down fast. They don't have recovery, so... Um, I just felt like I wanted something to bait that Weavile, so that's exactly what Slowbro is here to do. Culverberry means that we take like, I think we take like 30% from a knockoff or something crazy, and then Drain Punch uh, always Okos after rocks and just recovers all of that HP. I thought that was a really cool tech, I was really uh, quite proud of that myself. I thought it was fun. Um, Flamethrower is on there for the Avalug because this thing can switch into Avalug all day long. Uh, Avalug can avalanche into me and it's not going to do anything with his max defense and the resist there. Um, Ice Beam is for that Salamence and Scold is just trying to burn things and also for the um, Infinite. Of course, which otherwise can be a bit of a problem for my draft. I do apologize. I've just, just come in from the outside and I've gone from cold to hot so my nose is running now. Um, so I apologize if I'm... <laughs> Sniffing throughout the video, I am terribly sorry. It's 1 a.m. and I've literally just got back from the uh, from the library and it's very cold out there. Already, because England sucks. Um, no. Uh, anyways, <laughs> getting distracted already. Uh, we have a, a Jolly Megalopony. So this one was a bit of a risk. Uh, it basically speed ties with Megametric. So I arguably could have tried to go max speed Jolly um, to make sure I outsped the Megametric. I believe uh, uh, speed ties with Megametric anyway. Uh, but I decided not to. I decided to just go with enough speed to outspeed the... 
probably the Alolan Dug Trio, which is, oh, the Weavile. Maybe the Weavile and the Alolan Dug Trio, which I think hit, what, 115 each. Um, I think the only reason being is that if Mega Metric came in on this thing, um, it was going to get an Intimidate off. I didn't really want to be intimidated. I didn't really want to deal with Mega Manetric. Um, and I wanted to get a little bit of bulk on here as well so that I could take a hit or two. So I appreciate this is a bit of a weird build. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe I should have just gone max speed. But uh, with Return, High Jump Kick, Ice Punch, and Quick Attack, the idea being um, that Return into, like, even max physical defense Intimidate Salamence, Return into Ice Punch kills... Um, and with Mega Manetric, honestly, even if it comes in on Intimidate, probably High Jump Kick into, like, Quick Attack probably kills it. Um, but Quick Attack, uh, was the final move start on here, because I felt it was really important to have some priority against this team. With potential Scarfers, like, Infernape causing problems, uh, with Mega Manetric, obviously, me not speed, trying to, uh, speed tie with it. I don't really like speed ties, I try to avoid them. I'd rather run more bulk and take a hit and dish one back than, than risk a speed tie. Um, or in this case, run priority that I can hit him fairly hard with, stab priority. Uh, and yeah, with things like uh, Salamence potentially dragon dancing and getting moxie boosts, um, with Pinsa potentially being Scarf and getting moxie boost, I felt like um, running Quick Attack on there was really nice to just maybe pick something off that otherwise might sweep my team. Or maybe put something in chip range, you know. Um, so yeah, that's that's really why that's on there. Um, ice Punch, of course, for that Salamence, as I say, hopefully return into, high, uh, into Ice Punch. Two sh or taking out that Salamence, even if it's like max physical book with rocks. Without rocks, I don't think we do. I think we need rocks up, and then that combination always kills Salamence, I believe, or is a very good roll at least. Um, and then we have a max Spadef uh, Hydreigon. Again, like I have been running Hydreigon weird this season. Not quite max, because we do have a little bit in special attack. Um, and the little bit in special attack is to make sure that we take out, with the expert belt, um, the Manectric. Manectric cannot 3-hit KOs with any move. Even though we don't have leftovers, it does like 32% with every move. It has even overheat anything, do you know what I mean? We, we resist uh, Thunderbolt, we resist Volt Switch, we resist overheat, even HP Ice does like 32%. So... That's why we have this really, really bulky Hydreigon, because, like I said, I don't really want to stay in with Pamela. I'm just going to go straight out on her Hydreigon every time. I have such an easy switch into Manetric. I really didn't feel like Pamela needed to speed tie. That's the other reason. Um, so we just go out into Hydreigon. We take any hit from that thing. We fire off an Earth Power. Um, as I said, we I think we 2-hit KO or Oko it. I'm not really sure. Maybe Oko after Rocks. I can't quite remember. But we do a big, big chunk with that little bit of investment. Uh, Flamethrower is also really going to wear down that uh, Tangrowth, which can't do a lot to us. You know, it's, it's physical coverage, things like Earthquake, uh, Knock Off, Power Whip. That's not going to do a whole lot. And then if it decides to run a special like Giga Drain set, it might have HP Ice for us, but that's not going to do anything. And obviously Giga Drain's not going to do anything. So this could really 1v1 that effectively. Uh, whilst we don't want to go up to uh, one one on one with Avalug because of its uh, physical avalanches and things like that. At the same time, like Flamethrower is going to put a chunk on Avalug and that might just be the chip that we need late game. Which I'll get onto later in the builder. Uh, Dark Pulse, if I remember correctly, was pretty spammable. And particularly, it drew out the Floorges. And drawing out the Floorges was kind of nice for one or two of my other mons. Like Pamela, for example, if I wanted to just start clicking high jump kick and killing things. Um, then having this here to draw out Floorges, Cliss and Dark Pulse, just gets more and more chip on Floorges and wears it down. And makes it difficult for Floorges to do a lot. Um, so that's really nice. Earth Power, of course. Uh, we'd pick off the Infernape if we could live a close combat, but I'm pretty sure we just died to a close combat anyway. If he maybe overpredicted and went for like a Flare Blitz or something like that, we could maybe pick up for that. Um, I'm not sure if we'd take one from Weavile, but again, Flamethrower would do a lot if we did. Roost, just for longevity, it goes without saying. Flamethrower is well on there for the Alolan Dug Trio. If he brings like a banded Alolan Dug Trio, we could switch in on the Levitate, fire off some Flamethrowers and, and force him to kind of pivot around and move. So yeah, I really, really, really like this set um, with Aquarius here. And then next up we have Empoleon, and this is our Defogger and our Stealth Rocker. Very simple, Nico's just here to uh, fill a little niche this week, uh, but he has a slightly bigger role. He, he's bait for the Infernape, because with this special attack investment, we guarantee to Oko the Infernape. With the Chopal Berry, we take a close combat pretty well with this physical defense and HP investment. So the idea really is that Nico is here um, to bait that Infernape out, and I'm going to lead with the Empoleon in this game, in the hope that he leads with Infernape as either a um, Scarf U-Turner, or a, excuse me, oh, I've got hiccups, excuse me, there's either a Scarf U-Turner or as a Sash Stealth Rocker or something like that, um, so I'm going to leave the Napoleon, I'm going to try and bait that Infernape turn 1, because if I can get rid of it with the Scold early doors, then hey, that's a massive revenge killer to Lopany gone early. Um, flash Cannon on there, just so that we can definitely hit the floor, just otherwise floor just can switch in for free all the time, and I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Uh, stealth Rocks, so we can get Rocks up and Defog, so that we can Defog, very, very simple there. Next up we have Amoongus, and this is our floor just switching. 
Uh, we're not going to take anything from Floor, just as Moonblast. We can Sludge Bomb it, we can Spore it, and Spore is really, really important because uh, the kind of things that want to switch in on Amoongus, for example, uh, the Salamence might want to come in and set up on Amoongus. Um, <clears throat> the uh, Weavile might want to come in on Amoongus. The Infernic might want to come in on Amoongus. If I can get him on a switch into any of those and fire off a Spore, Thank you very much. That's a major threat out of commission while it's asleep, and I can start pivoting around and putting some pressure on. So I really, really love this Mon as a uh, way of just breaking up your opponent's momentum with Spore and, and stopping some of their major threats that want to take advantage of uh, Amoongus' relative sort of passiveness, I guess. Sludge Bomb, obviously, for the... Um, for the Florgus and Giga Drain, for the Jellicent, otherwise Jellicent is a free switch into this thing. Um, and Synthesis and Regenerator, obviously for longevity. Then our late game sweeper. This is the man. This is Checkmate the Scolipede. Currently going into this game, Checkmate was uh, 10 and 1 in the league. Uh, only loss being when I brought Poison Point. Oh, oh yeah, and only death for this thing being when I brought Poison Point. Unless I'm making a mistake, I'm pretty sure it's 10 and 1. Uh, which puts it as the whole league's MVP out of both conferences, 24-man league. Scolipede the MVP. Just I've just clicked with this Pokemon. I know that people will say it's easy to use, whatever, and that's cool. I just like it. Like I really have felt I've been able to position this Mon very well in my games. And you know, if I hadn't brought Poison Point against uh, Kurt, maybe I would have got another kill or two there too. I'm not saying I would have beaten him, but maybe I would have got one or more kills. Who knows? Um, this week, we're just trying to polish off the end of the game with this. If we can get some chip on Ag Avalug and we can get some chip on Jellicent, uh, Scolipede just runs through the rest of his draft. Um, Poison Jab, uh, Earthquake, and Rock Slide we're running. So, Infernic dies to Earthquake. Tangrowth dies to Poison Jab. Okay, like, we need to get an SDO up and we maybe need some chip because Tangrowth is bulky, but it's not going to do a whole lot to me with, like, an Earthquake or anything anyway. Um, Jellicent, we need some chip on, and then we can hit Jellicent pretty hard with an Earthquake or a Rock Slide. Uh, Mega Manetric, Earthquake, Pinsir, uh, does not want to take a plus two Poison Jab. Floor just dies to a Poison Jab. Salamence will die to a plus two Rock Slide, more than likely, and I don't think it wants to take a Poison Jab either. Aggron will die to a plus two Earthquake, especially if we've got Rock Slide to take away a Sturdy. Uh, Weavile will die to a plus two Rock Slide or Poison Jab, most likely. And then Dugtrio will die to a plus two Earthquake. And Avalug, if we can get some chip, I think that a Rockium Z at plus two does around 70%. So we need to get rocks up and then maybe just any little bit of chip, like 5-10% on the Avalug, and then we're good. So that's why I was kind of saying with uh, with Aquarius that maybe, hey, we just stay in and we get a little bit of chip on Avalug, or we get a little bit of chip on Jellicent, or a little bit of chip on Tangrowth. These are the kind of things that if we can Tangrowth, Jellicent, and uh, and Avalug with a little bit of chip on those three, then Checkmate just wins. Um, and that's pretty awesome. So that was kind of the game plan going into this. They were the ones that I wanted to try and beat down. And yeah, that's the team. Hopefully you guys like it. Uh, all that being said, let's jump into the battle. So here we are in the battle, guys. And Blake, as you can see, has brought a very, very intimidating team. Um, he's brought the Mega Metric, no pun intended there with the Intimidate. Uh, he's brought the Infinite, the Agron, the Salamence, the Florgius, and the Jellicent. So one thing I have to be really careful of is a potential Dragon Dance Moxie Salamence Sweep. I know it's not Z, so I can play around it with securing that knowledge, uh, which helps a lot. But it's definitely something I want to watch out for. The Agron, if it's a banded set, just does massive damage to everything. Nothing wants to take hits from Agron. However, offensively, you know, I have Earth Power with an Expert Belt. I have Scold. I have High Jump Kick. I have Scold. I have Giga Drain. Uh, well, Giga Drain is neutral, to be fair, but I have Spore. And I have Earthquake. So I know that everything hits it for super effective damage or can spore it on my team. So offensively can handle it, but switching into it is going to be a problem. I might just need to kill it with whatever I have in on it when the time comes. Um, Infinite, I need to be careful of that thing just you turning around. I think it's probably going to be a Scarf Revenge Killer on Lopini. So I need to make sure that I just play around it carefully. Going into Slowbro on it as it clicks uh, U-turn is going to chip down Slowbro. So that's a potential threat. So I just, I just need to... Make sure that I don't over predict or whatever and try and play the safe game with it. I don't want to see this uh, floor just being able to wish pass into the rest of his team and just keep them around. Um, especially this Jellicent because that's the only thing that really beats Scolopede here. Looking at it, he didn't bring the Tangrowth and he didn't bring the Avalok. So if I can get some chip on Jellicent or in some way incapacitate it, then I'm, I'm going to win with Scolopede if I can get it set up at the right time. So... That's super, super, super important going into this. So with that in mind, just as I said in the team builder, we're going to lead off with Empoleon, uh, hoping that he leads with Infernape. And we actually see that he does. Now, this is really, really crucial because he has, in my opinion, two choices. He can click close combat and potentially bring out the Slowbro. 
Nothing else on my team wants to switch in. There's no way in hell you switch in an Amoongus and Casey Flare Blitzers. You don't switch in in a close combat with a Hydreigon, a Lopini, or uh, yeah, you don't switch in the Scolipede to a Flare Blitz. So it's a really, really tricky situation where he knows that my best play, seemingly, is just to go out into Slowbro. Now, in my opinion, he, he has two options. He can either think that, okay, well, he's led in Polion. It could be a Sash lead. He could go for Aqua Jet Chip. Um, or he could go into Slowbro. And he has a 50-50. Either close combats, hoping I stay in, or a U-turn, thinking I go out. The safer play is to U-turn, because, hey, you don't lose anything if you U-turn. Uh, the riskier play is to close combat. With that in mind, I'm just going to click Scold, because if he close combats and I lose my Chopalberry, then... I've allowed him to make the risky play, and I've not punished him, and that's a that's a waste. So uh, really what I need to do is I need to make sure that I do punish him. Um, and at the worst case scenario, he goes into Jellicent, he gets the water absorbed, that's fine, but I can set rocks on Jellicent anyway, So and that's what I want. I want rocks in this game to wear down the Jellicent, to wear down the Salamence, to t take the Sturdy from the Aggron. So I'm just like, okay, well, I'm going to click Scold, and he actually goes for the use and gets crit, it doesn't matter. Um, I click Scold, and this is where, in my opinion, he makes a slight misplay. He goes into Metric, I Scold, and I get a crit, and it kills. Now, at this point of the game, turn 1, Scold, on his Mega Pokemon, so, so unlucky. Like, I, I apologise to Blake in the chat, I couldn't say sorry enough, and I really genuinely meant it. I don't know if this is game-changing, we'll have to watch the rest of the game, I don't want to spoil anything, obviously, but... It just sucks. Whatever happens from here on out, he is on the back foot from turn one. He's lost his Mega Pokemon. Now, what I will say at this point is that I'm thinking, well, you know, I know that my Hydreigon just switches into this thing every time and completely hardballs it. So I actually don't benefit that much by this thing going down other than it completely puts him on tilt, which of course sucks when... You can see his nickname for this is Flump This Game, and his Infernate was called I Want Out. So, obviously he's not in the best mindset going into this, and, th and that really, really sucks. The one thing I would say is that I felt like he, um, he, he, t he took a risky play. Um, he he U-turned out, and seeing me stay in, sh in my opinion, should say that I'm either Sash or Chobal to him, because I'm not the type of player that stays in on a potential close combat if I'm not either of those things. Um, I don't risk my Empoli on turn one just to get rocks up. Looking at my team, it's my only stealth rocker. So, like, it just wouldn't be worth it unless I was Sash or Chopal. And if I'm Sash or Chopal, I'm probably clicking Scold to bait the Infernape. So, in that case, like, I feel like his best play was really to go into Jellicent and then to pivot into something else. Or, you know, try and do something like that. Or maybe even go Salamence if it was a special set um, and then pressure me that way. Because at the minute... Going to Manetric whilst, yes, it pressures me offensively, it's making a huge assumption that I'm clicking Stealth Rocks here. Because if I'm not, you're still going to take... He, I think this would have done about uh, 70%. I should point out as well, this this crit was still only a 30% chance to kill with the Skulls crit. So it wasn't even a good chance to kill. Um, I, I got incredibly lucky. But as I say, I just feel like um, what it would have done regardless is put him in Megalopony Quick Attack range. Um, and along with, it would have given me an easy switch into Hydreigon. So, uh, yeah, it, it sucks and I'm over I'm over discussing turn one here. But it's such a huge moment in the game when turn one you lose your Mega Pokemon. But um, I don't know how much it changed the game because of my Hydreigon build, which he could never have known. And I couldn't very well say to him in the game, actually, mate, I've brought a fully Spadef Hydreigon that walls you because... You know, I can't give him that kind of information halfway through a game. So anyway, we play on. Um, and he goes out into the Agron. And um, this is a pretty smart play. He goes to the Autotomize. I'm just going to go for the rocks. Because if this thing is banded, it's going to destroy me anyway. And I'm, But I'm hopefully going to outspeed and get my rocks up. Uh, but I want to see what he locks into if he's banded. And if he goes for the Autotomize, which he does, I'm certain this thing is weakness policy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire off a Scold, bring him down to Sturdy. And then I can Revenge Kill with Lopany anyway. No problems. He does get the boost, but I wanted to make sure I got my rocks up before I gave him the boost, crucially. I know it means I had to take two attacks, but taking two attacks unboosted is, is the same as taking one attack boosted, and I get my rocks up. So there was no point in not. We then go into Megalopony, and we just click quick attack, and this thing drops. You know, it's a, it's an easy kind of revenge there. Um, but he does manage to take out Nico. But we have rocks up, and then he goes into Jellicent, and I'm like, okay, maybe the Infernape isn't Scarf. That's a really interesting switch. But I can go into um, the Hydreigon here. It's specially defensive. It's not going to take much from this thing. It doesn't mind being burnt if he's a Will-O-Wisp set, which is what I'm predicting him to be. Um, and it also is fully expendable with the Mega Manetric being gone. 
and then I make a double. And the reason that I make a double is because I fully expect Floor just to come out. It looks fairly obvious that I'm just going to spam Dark Pulse here against this Jellicent. Um, and even if I'm not, Floor just is just a safe switch into anything that uh, Hydro can do, really. I'm definitely not going to click Flash Cannon um, against that Jellicent. So I just double out into um, Amoogus because this is a point where I get Spore Pressure. So now he has to let me put something to sleep. Either give me that Infernape, give me that Salamence, give me the Jellicent, or I'm going to stop you from being able to Wish Pass and I'm going to get the... Um, I'm going to get the... Flaugeous. Instead he goes out into Jellicent and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I haven't got as much chip as I would like on Jellicent in terms of damage, but I've got it to sleep, so that really helps Scolipede. And he goes out into Salamence here and I'm thinking, okay, the way he's pivoted, he, he clicked Protect on Flaugeous, he saw I was going for Spore, he allowed the Jellicent to go to sleep so that he could activate Sleep Claws and go hard Salamence and I could have put it to sleep. That 100% means this is set up Salamence. You do that because you know what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? This is like a... I don't want to go hard in Salamence because I don't want it to go to sleep because I want to set it up and this Amoongus is going to be too passive. If I had flat foul play, I'm sure I could have chunked him down after the Dragon Dance, but instead, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the Giga Drain on the Switch. There's no reason for me not to Giga Drain the Jellicent. And then I'm going to go out to Slowbro, allowing him to set up. I want him to set up here because now he doesn't have Z. There's no way he can Oko a fully physically defensive uh, Slowbro. Even a crit at plus one, I'm not sure kills me. We'll see how from how much damage this fly does. Uh, so yeah, even a crit wouldn't kill me and I can just fire ice beam and once he went for the fly He was locked in and couldn't avoid my ice beam. So that's a huge threat check. So that worked out just perfectly uh, He goes out into infernape here and I'm thinking okay What's the best thing he can possibly do? He can u-turn and then he can go out into Jellicent But that just brings Jellicent back in and gives me a free switch into something while Jellicent's asleep um, So really I'm fully okay here Just staying in with Slowbro. Letting it go down if need be, but just firing off a scold and hoping he over predicts. Maybe goes for a close combat or something. Um, and he actually just goes for the thunder punch. Obviously, because I am physically defensive, I completely eat that. Um, and we can fire off a scold and take out this Infernape. So again, another major threat gone. And he goes out into floor just here. There's no point in me staying in with the slow bro. I haven't teched anything for the floor just on the slow bro, so uh, he will beat me one v one. I'm just going to go out into strong fall, and unfortunately, he gets a special attack drop. Uh, that kind of sucks. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be like, okay, well, I may as well preserve the um, slow bro. I can easily go out on what's clearly going to be a wish here and get some more regen back on it just in case I need this for some reason later on in the game. And we'll go back into Amoongus and we'll reset that special attack drop. He spams Moonblast, gets another special attack drop. And at this point, I'm like, okay, we're stuck in a bit of a stalemate here. I can just keep pivoting, but I don't want to give him the... Um, Jellicent for free, so I'm just gonna fire off a sludge bomb and test how much it does. It does 21%, but we do snag the poison. I'm at least wearing him down slowly, but this is gonna be long and arduous, and there's no point. I know that he's upset with the way this battle's gone, rightly so. I don't want to drag it out any longer. He doesn't want to drag it out any longer, so I may as well just go Scolipede here. He hopefully is gonna wish, but if he clicks Moonblast, I'm really not gonna take that much anyway. He does click Moonblast, he does 30%. Uh, that makes me feel not confident to sword stance on him because I don't want him to get a crit or anything So I'm just gonna finish him off with a poison jab here. Um, I don't know if he's teching like psychic I think Claude just gets psychic so I may as well just polish him off with a, with a Poison jab get my speed boost because I know that the Jellicent has not stayed in for a full turn yet It's come in gone out. It's come in gone out, but it's never been in for a turn So it's guaranteed one sleep turn while I can SD and then he's just going to get a little bit of leftovers, but I'm at plus two now, and I'm like, okay, I can take any one hit from this Scolipede. Hopefully, Z Rock Slide kills. I'm pretty sure he must be a physically defensive Jellicent to take that, um, because it, it doesn't do nearly enough. Um, but he does stay asleep for one extra turn, which allows me to just click Earthquake and finish him off. Even if he'd woken up and clicked, like, Scold or Will-O-Wisp, I think I still killed with an Earthquake, so I don't think it would have mattered. Um, and if not, I revenge killed with Hydreigon, of course. So Checkmate doing exactly what he was supposed to do here. Closing out this game for me with two kills at the end. And now 12-1 and one in five games. 12-1 and one in five games, guys. That's crazy. That's the best we've ever had a Pokemon do. Scolipi definitely confirming itself as one of my favorite Pokemon in draft in just five games. Um, yeah, really, really love this Mon already. Uh, and the team working out perfectly. The team really, really working out nicely. A nice 5-0 win. GG to my man Blake. As I say, I am genuinely sorry about that Scold turn one. I don't think the death of the Manetric affected the game so much as the unlike completely understandable rage that it caused affected the game. I think that was the, the clutch thing was that 
Uh, whilst Manetric couldn't have made a big impact on this game, Blake not being put on tilt early when he's already not in a good mindset would have changed the game. So I feel so bad for him, and I can't apologize to him enough because he's just had a really rough time at the minute in draft, and it sucks. It sucks when you're going through that patch. Um, so yeah, I genuinely am sorry to him. And I hope that we can play again soon and we can have a good, clean game because I know what a good player he is. And you can see from the quality of his draft here that he knows the game. And it just... It's just sucking for him at the minute. But it'll get there. I, th I think I had the matchup this week. Like, I really... Uh, uh, going into this from my team builder, uh, it would have been so hard for him to get the W here. Like, I think my team just matched up really, really well. So, you have those games, guys. Anyway, all that being said, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this season. So far, we are 4-1 and one in the APC. This is probably our best start in a league ever, I, I think. I think this is even better than PBA. Um, but yeah, back-to-back but -back great starts in leagues at the minute. Really, really started to push on, and I'm really pleased with the way things are going. So, hopefully we can continue this form throughout the season. Next week, we go up against Jack. Now, Jack is a major, major rival for playoffs. Um, in those playoff spots, we have a few people really pulling away uh, at the top of the league, myself included, of course, at 4-1. Um, and Jack is one of those. He's also at 4-1, I believe. Uh, I think he beat Socrates recently, who's one of the best players in the league, no doubt, a finalist runner-up last season. So Jack is a force to be reckoned with, and we really, really need to be careful when we come up against him next week, uh, which is... It's pretty scary considering how little time I have to prep, but hopefully we can pull something out of the bag there. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. Hope you guys are looking forward to the rest of the season. I hope you've enjoyed this battle. I'm going to shut up rambling on now um, and try and get on with some more work. <laughs> Thank you so much for all open around with me, and I'll catch you again next time.